Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this episode of the Keto Test Kitchen, we are going to try out four non-grain flours that I have not used before. Similar to the lupin flour video I did, which I will link to right up here, our test method will be the chaffle. And like that video, I will be making one chaffle with each type of flour. That means I will be cutting the base chaffle recipe in half. Now, for me, the base chaffle recipe is a half a cup of mozzarella and one large egg, and then a tablespoon of whatever add-in you might want to add. That was redundant. So for each chaffle in this video, I will be using my standard method, which is to blend the flour with the mozzarella in a Cuisinart mini food processor, then add the egg. Because I'm doing a half batch, it'll be one quarter cup of mozzarella, one half tablespoon of flour, and one half of an egg, which I've measured out to be a little bit more than two tablespoons. For each of the flours, I will provide the total and net carbs per quarter cup. That was the easiest calculation that I could do because the serving size varies for each one of these. Sorry for the folks that like it in grams. I will include pictures of the nutritional labels in case you wanna do the math on your own. I'll also talk about taste and texture, my thoughts about how these might be usable, and do I think they deserve a place in your keto pantry? For this video, we will be looking at tiger nut flour. Now, the reason I chose this is because it is in Birch Bender's, I'm not sure if it's keto or paleo, one of the two. And I was actually kind of surprised then at how carby it is. In one quarter cup, there is 14 grams of total carbs and 11 grams of net carbs. So I don't know if this is gonna be the sort of thing we'd make a loaf of bread with. I guess we'll have to see what the flavor is like and determine if it's worth putting in any sort of a baked good. Next, we have hazelnut flour, which at a quarter cup comes in at eight grams of total carbs and four grams of net carbs. Sesame flour, which in one quarter cup has only four grams of total carbs and a little more than one gram of net carbs. And finally, a flour that I've had a few of my viewers request that I try out, mesquite flour. Now again, this is pretty carby at 24 grams of total carbs in a quarter cup and 12 grams of net carbs. So I'm hoping a little goes a long way with this stuff. So let's make some chaffles and see what we think. On the left, we have the tiger nut. And on the right, the hazelnut. It has been about four minutes, so we will pop these out and get them off to a cooling rack. Next, we have the sesame and the mesquite. And I think these are done, so we will pop these over to the cooling rack. We'll give them a moment to cool, then we'll do the taste test. First, the tiger nut. This is more moist than most of the chaffles that I make with mozzarella and egg. The flavor is kind of potato-like. It really reminds me of Pringles, actually. This is interesting. I think I might be able to make some sort of a cracker using this tiger nut flour that tastes an awful lot like Pringles. My concern though is the carb count. So I'm gonna say for tiger nut flour, hold off for right now. Let's see if I can come up with a cool cracker or some sort of keto chip type recipe that doesn't blow the doors off our daily carbs. Next, we have the hazelnut flour. This one is not as moist as the tiger nut flour and the nut flavor is very, very pronounced. I think this may have some potential, perhaps in a cracker or maybe in some sort of a cookie, but we're gonna need something to balance out that really, really heavy nut flavor. Yeah, this brings hazelnut in a big way. So if you have any ideas for a dish that calls for hazelnuts, put it down in the comments. I'd like your feedback on this because otherwise we're gonna have to figure out something to balance this out. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna say on this one, again, maybe we need to be in a holding pattern, see if I can come up with like a cool cracker recipe. 
Then we have the sesame flower. This is similar to the tiger nut in terms of the moisture, a little more moist than the hazelnut. The sesame flavor is there, but it's not overpowering. I think perhaps this used in a cracker with some sharp cheddar cheese. There was, when I was growing up, I don't know if they still make it because I don't go down the cracker aisle, but these sesame cheddar little breadstick crackers, I think we might be able to emulate the flavor of those. I like that it's mild, and I also like the carb profile on it. And lastly, we have the mesquite flour. Now this, when I open up the bag, by far the best smelling. I don't know what I'd compare it to. Very much like a cookie of some sort. Mmm. Wow. That is a complex and very tasty flavor. It is the most moist out of all four of these. And the flavor is actually surprisingly sweet on this, which I guess makes a little bit of sense given the amount of carbs. The taste on this, it really reminds me of like a, a cinnamon roll that has raisins baked into it. I mean, all the flavors are, are subtle but complex. This is, I mean, I was not expecting this at all. I expected mesquite and I think barbecue, but this is something altogether unexpected. It's, it's like spice and like dried fruit at the same time. I'm thinking something like this, there may be a dish you could make with zucchini perhaps or chayote squash that creates sort of an apple pie or you know, apple tart or something like that. I mean, there's also just even like the vaguest little bit of molasses type of flavor to this as well. This is really, really very interesting. I guess in summary, I would have to say, unless you have a really specific baking idea for any one of these four, I wouldn't rush out and get it quite yet. But I do think that each one of these has some potential. The question is, is it going to be just a one trick pony, you know, one recipe and that's all I can figure out? Or is it something that should be a pantry staple? At the moment right now, I kind of got to lean towards each one of these are probably a specialty item. If, however, you have used any of these four and come up with something special, or if you've got some ideas that you would like me to try out, post it down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, tap that bell and select all notifications. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button and see what memberships are all about. Thanks for watching.